Hello, welcome to Matters Today. I'm Joyce Young and I'm your host for the program today, Matters Today. What matters to you matters to us. Thank you so much for tuning into the program again on this Thursday, the live program. We are here today. I have a, a special guest, but she's been here before. Her name is Sonia Clark. Welcome again, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Praise God. And she's been here before, and she had so much in her that I, I if you remember from the other program, I said that I was going to have her back, and she is back. Mm -hmm. But And she's a woman with a mission. I mean, she's just so full of information and wisdom and knowledge. So she has a lot to share uh, today on various, in various areas. But before we get started, this is a live program. You're welcome to call in or email with any questions or comments that you may want to make. Our number is, our telephone number is 985-902-8888. Please give us a call. And also, if you have internet and you want to email us, you can email us at questions uh, w at wstytv.com. Again, if you want to email us any questions, and we do have someone monitoring those and we will respond to you, you can email us at questions at wstytv.com. Uh, I said one more time. Questions at WSTYTV.com. And again, thank you for tuning in. Now, just plan to sit in front of that TV. We're talking about the Lord today. We're talking about things that will benefit you. And we're talking about uh, maybe you've been praying about something and your answer is in this hour now. So just get comfortable, get all the kids, put them around the TV set and just and just Ask the Lord to come in and speak to your heart about some things that we want to share. But just a little bit again about Sonia, uh, Sonia Clark. She um, she is, well, let me just start here. She and her husband and three children have lived in Mandeville about 16 years, Mandeville, Louisiana. But she also has lived in Germany. Her mother is a native of Germany, but her father was there in the military. And uh, and Sonia has also had the opportunity to visit one of the concentration camps there in Germany. But for the last 18 years, she's had a vision to see women arise and mature in Christ. That's been her vision. And she's been seeking the Lord and praying and just doing what Whatever she can do to just cause to, to inform women, to enable women to to just teach women about a rise into their position in the Lord during her own uh, uh, trials and, he and, and troubles, her headaches. She encountered a living Jesus. Praise God. And she did this through uh, uh, intimacy and the growing knowledge of him and, and, and a mature relationship that he led her to. So she's very well knowledge and she's a she's a at, she's a prayer warrior and she's very well knowledge in um in a relationship with the Lord and wisdom and knowledge. Her background is that she's a teacher. She's a school teacher. She has a work, she has a work for Israel, in Israel, and she has a love for Israel as well. Praise God. She desires also to see the body of Christ hunger for a maturing relationship. Praise the Lord. You know, when you've had that encounter yourself with the Lord, you want others to know about that as well. And she's done these things through teaching Bible studies and leading women's ministries. Praise God. She is an ordained minister. She was saved at age 13. And she's currently a an area team president of a Glow International in Louisiana. Also, see how busy she, Sonia, is? She serves on the Louisiana Apostolic Prayer Network Council. So welcome again, Thank Sonia. You so much. That was a mouthful there. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. It's good. So what have you been doing since our last show? Well, since we last met, we uh, have birthed a new aglow in Slidell. And so if anyone uh, wants to come to that, we are meeting at the uh, Victoria Tea Room in Slidell. So. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So if you would like to know anything about aglow, if you would like to attend one of those meetings, Slidell and Mandeville, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And let me give them the website just sure. while we're thinking about it, because we are going to talk more about aglow international. 
What is it? You give me what it's, a, it's <laughs> www.louisianaaglow.com. It's spelled out Louisiana Aglow and it's dot com. And it will have all the uh, different aglows that we have. Okay. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And also, uh, what is what's been going on with the Louisiana? Uh, Apostolic Prayer, Prayer Network. Network Council. Well, currently they are trying to get everybody from Louisiana. You know, Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, has called for a prayer for our country. Okay. And we, Louisiana being the sister state of Texas, you know, Louisiana intercessors have been called to go and uh, partner with our, our sisters and brothers in Texas. And I know you can Google that. And so Louisiana Apostolic Prayer Network is part of that. And also intercessors for Louisiana, they have been meeting in different strategic areas um, of the state and, and just bringing uh, different teachings. You know, uh, Todd Trahan is is the head of that. And I know that they're doing ones right now called um, um, Unbinding the Strong Man and, and over our state. And so there's those different prayer networks going on right now around the state. So okay. that they can access that on the Intercessors for Louisiana site as well. Okay. Praise so we're God. all kind of networking together. You know, it's not about one person. It's about the body of Christ in the earth today, yeah. bringing the kingdom of God from heaven to earth. And it's about that networking of all of us together. So it isn't just one a glow or just one person. It's it's the whole cluster of grapes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Praise God. Now, have you been back to Israel? Not since not since April, since I was here last. Okay. I wish I had been, but um, no. But Aglow has been. Um, the Aglow goes every year, and so uh, they did go back in May. And um, they were able to really do some strategic praying in Jerusalem and at the Temple Mount this time, which is really unusual. Okay. All right. So they won't be going back until May of next year. Correct. Correct. Oh, uh, okay. So All right. I go when I can. Okay. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Well, um... Uh, just briefly, briefly before we go into a glow, what is the mandate of a glow? What what is that? Well, a glow's call has been to restore women to their rightful place in the Lord, because so many times through the centuries, women have been um, they've been put down and they've been um, made to feel then less than and and were not worthy. And so a glow's heart is to restore women to their rightful place in the Lord Jesus. And so the mandates are is one of them is to bring male and female reconciliation. Okay, hold that thought okay. for one moment. We're going to go to break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Uh, just We'll be back in a moment. We have so much to share with you, and God bless you. Welcome back to Matters Today, and I'm Joyce Young, and I'm here with my guest, Sonia Clark, my special guest, praise God, and this is Matters Today. What matters to you is mat matters to us, and we would love for you to call in with any comments or questions. Our telephone number is 985-902-8888, and if you would like to email us any comments or questions, uh, please email us at questions at WSTYTV.com. We would love to hear from you. Praise God. Now, I'm talking to Sonia today, and we're talking about she had the Lord has so much in her life. And we're talking about a Glow International right now. And you were saying before we went to break, you were saying talking about the mandate. Yes, I was saying that uh, a Glow has three mandate, mandates. And one of them is to bring male and female reconciliation because it was the the heart of the father to have women and men working together. I mm -hmm. mean, that was his heart and without going into too much teaching of that. And the second one is to reveal the father's love for the Muslim people, for Islam. And we have been called and set forth to unveil the father's heart for them because God loves them. And the other one is to show the heart of the father for Israel and how he loves his people, Israel. So those are the, that's basically what I call the DNA the of DNA. a glow. Okay. And it's the heart of God to bring restoration. It's first and foremost is restoration for women in in all areas of Islam, Israel, and um, restoration for the male and the female to work to walk together okay. like God had intended for them. Okay, praise God. Mm -hmm. So, how did a Glow International get started? Well, it started in 1967 with some women who were having coffee. It was during the time of the Charismatic Renewal, if you'll recall, and also the Jesus Movement was very popular at that time, and it was just a very uh, strong presence of God at that time. And as these women would get to 
together and pray, the presence of God would come in and the Holy Spirit was moving in those days in such a powerful way that women just heard of it and would come. Before they knew it, they had coffee groups everywhere and people were just praying and the presence of God would so show up that they then began to, they grew into having um, what they call lighthouses or outreaches where women would then give their testimony and people would be healed. There was a lot of healings and there, and it grew out of that. You know, I, I think of it as a young girl growing into maturity and, and God fashioned and framed a glow at that time for that particular portion. And as she grew and matured, she became an intercessory arm and just now is able to decree and declare things in the earth realms mm -hmm. because we, that's what the Lord wants. He wants the heavenly realms brought to earth so that we have the kingdom of God here on earth. And Praise so um, through those different avenues and those <laughs> mandates, God uses a glow and establishes it in those different ways. Okay. And from those three women doing that, you know, oh a glow gosh. just has blown up yes. all over the world. Yes. To, 172 to, nations. 172 yes. nations. Yes. Praise and, God. and some of them um, are outreaches. We call it outreaches where maybe somebody will give a testimony and then pray and, and the Holy Spirit will be baptized in the Holy Spirit or, or someone can get saved. And, or it might be um, an intercessory group. It might be two or three women um, under the covering of a glow that are praying in calling in, you know, uh, for children to be saved in an area. Uh, currently, we have one in Uptown right now and um, in Elysian Fields area where we are just praying and taking territory for the Lord, establishing his presence in the midst of an area and of a territory. And um, I did not mention this, but we are in the process of um, Lake Charles, uh, of bringing a group to, to mm. Lake Charles. So we're hoping mm. to do that this next month. Oh, good. So God is on the move. And, um, you know, there's such an apostolic anointing and prophetic anointing on a glow. I was going to mention, too, that uh, we're having a big, our big, uh, conference, international conference. Okay. Uh, September 29th and 30th, October, uh, September 29th, September 30th, and October 1st in Houston. And it's thousands upon thousands of people. It's the international conference this year. We mm -hmm. alternate one year international one year national. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they come from all over the world and they come and they bring their flags. And um, I, I can recall some previous ones where they actually would come in their burkas. Mm -hmm. And these were women who were so trodden down by their culture. But when they came and they were around other women that were believing in men that are believing God, that's just electrifying in the air. Her burqa came off as she was taking her flag and she finally, she just ripped it off because she felt so free. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they come and they're, they're so afraid that their faces might be caught on camera and taken back to their country but uh, there's such a liberty and a freedom and you see other people from other countries worshiping and loving the same God that you do and it's just such a, a heart to heart thing with them you know mm -hmm. praise God yes praise it's wonderful Lord. so we have a Chuck Pierce will be speaking and um, Johnny and Lau will be there Graham Cook and uh, Klaus will be doing the worship incredible worship so uh, okay it'll be wonderful now, the last time that you were on the show, we talked about uh, many different. We talked we talked about a lot of different things, but we could get into everything because of the time. Sure. And so, I wanted you to come back, and I wanted you to expand more on what the Lord was leading you to talk about. And one of, and one of those areas is a glow and the mission of a glow. Yes. And so, I want you to just begin with yes. that. And uh, you've given us a little bit of background, so okay. just share what's on your heart. Okay. Well, and it's interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting. Uh, you know, Praise God. the Father's heart was for men and women to work together. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the Garden of Eden, when he created Adam, he, he, it says that he said, he said, we will create man in our image. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Elohim. We're going to create man in our image. A, that word is representative. We'll have a representative here on earth to do in heaven here on earth. And so when, when Adam was created, it was in the image of God. Male, female. One of the names of God is El Shaddai, the many-breasted one, the nurturer. Do you know that God is like male, female? He is one God, male, female. Mm. And he created Adam as a representative of himself here on earth in his image, totally male, female. And then he says, it's not good for man to be alone. So it says he pulled out of the side, the actual word, we have it interpreted rib in our book, in our Bible, but the actual Hebrew word is out of the side of Adam. He pulled out a female portion is what the Hebrew rendering actually is. And so 
male female was in Adam, he pulled this other self, if you will, out of Adam, called her, he named her Eve, mm -hmm. woman. And so the heart of the father is male, female together. That was his original intent, intent, and it was the first church, if you will, the first family of God, man and woman, working together as one flesh. In fact, when God says he would make for Adam a help meet, that word in Hebrew is actually neget, and actually it means face to face. They were to walk face to face with one another. And in the actual root word of that word, neged, it means to reveal, to expose, and to talk. So if women are talkers, that's what they're supposed to be because she is to reveal, to expose, and to talk. And so what's happened is Satan has so hated that. And of course, we know what happened in the garden. Yeah. Uh, Eve took of the fruit, which she wasn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord, and, and they were ashamed, and so they ran. And of course, we know that when God was looking for them, he said, where are you? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. She was the first one to expose Satan for who he was, the deceiver. And so we know by the time that the curse has come in Genesis 3.15, that God says, to the woman, you will continually expose him. There will be antagonism and enmity between you and her, between the serpent and the woman, between your seed and her seed, capital S, because the woman would bring forth a Messiah who would finally, his foot, his he would, he would just crush Satan's head so that her seed, the Messiah, would crush Satan's head. And so we know that she was the one that revealed and exposed Satan. And today, we continually, we are the ones, the birthers in the natural, we birth and we do it in the spiritual. We pray things in, we birth things in in the spirit realm, and we also expose the enemy for what he's doing. Okay, wait, okay. This is good. <laughs> Praise God, this is good. But I had never, ever heard this. So are you telling me that the woman is not the weaker vessel, yes. as we've been told no. all my life, no. and that the woman... Was God did not create the woman to walk side by side no. or behind, no. which is better right. for some. Right. Okay, no. but you're saying face to face. Yes, yes. Say it again. That Asher Hebrew word is N E G E D. You can look it up in the Strong's Concordance. You can look it up in your Bible, and the word help meet that actually means to be front face to face. You are to we're to walk face to face with the man in. That was the whole heart of the father. He, as he pulled that female part out of the male part, they were to become together one, uh, uh, like the first, uh, like, like God, the heart of the father. So whenever you have a male-dominated area, it, it is not the complete heart of the father. Not the complete. It isn't his complete heart. Yes, face-to-face -face and, and exposing oh the enemy together. Okay. We okay. work in conjunction. Okay. Now, I've always heard in my life being in church old enough to understand is that God did not call women. Mm -hmm. Okay, God mm -hmm. didn't call women. Mm -hmm. Women definitely cannot pastor, barely speak. Right. You know, but I always wondered how is it that a woman can walk in the same authority, power wise, right. authority of the word, power of the word right. as a man? Right. I mean, she her prayers are answered just like That's anyone right. else. That's and right. my goodness. That's right. Listen, what is I've never heard this. What does Jesus say? He says there's no partiality in him. There's no Jew. There's no Gentile. There's no male. There's no female. He did not create us to be anything lesser. That is all. Satan has done this over the centuries. I mean, how many bride burnings and uh, rapes and just horror. I mean, it was the 1920s to where in America we were considered intelligent enough to be able to vote. I mean, that's not all that long ago. I mean, it's just, you can see the plan of Satan oh through the God. centuries. And uh, Is that written any place other than in the, I mean, you didn't get this from a book that you read that someone wrote. No. I mean, other than the, you know, because you need to write a book is what I'm saying. Someone need to put this in a book. Yeah. Well, it's the heart of a glow. I mean, it yeah. is the heart of a glow. And, um, you know, we do Bible studies and that kind of thing. And, and if people are more interested in you can certainly go to the uh, international website. And there are teachings on and, and to understand that. And that's www.aglow.international.org. And so, you know. I, I've just known about that because I've known that the heart of the father is to have male and female working together. That's his heart. 
Mm, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? I mean, <laughs> praise God. This is, I don't know if this is new information for you, but this is the first time that I've heard this and I've heard, I'm hearing it from Sonia Clark. Uh, it, I'm sure you have a comment. I know that you want to call in or do something. I'm sure that if you are looking at this program, you have something that you want to ask. And the number is 985-902-8888. Or you can email us at questions at WSTYTV.com. Because what you just said, um, Sonia, really opens up a freedom. Yes. Okay. You know, the revelation of what you just yes. said is a freedom for so many to just walk, you know, in, in what God has called them to, to do. But we're going to, uh, to a break right now and we'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere because she, Sonia has so much more that she wants to share. I may have her repeat that again. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Matters Today, and I'm Joyce Young, and I'm here with Sonia Clark, praise the Lord. And we are sharing about a glow and God's perfect will for man and woman and how the Lord, how the Lord truly designed for man and woman to, to be. So why don't you share? I hope that you were looking at the program. I'm just so excited right now, mm -hmm. but I hope that you were looking at the program before we went to break and please call in again. Let me just give you that number. 985-902-8888. And you may email us at questions at WSTYTV.com. Why don't you just go on and share? Okay. I mean, it's just you, you, I think you need to write a book. No, I really do, right. but go ahead. Okay. Well, I was talking about how God had created, uh, Adam as a male female and then mm -hmm. pulled a female part out of out of him right. and it and that's why he looked at Eve and he said bone of my bone flesh of my flesh mm -hmm. she had been pulled out of him and in fact I recently just found this scripture in uh, Ephesians 5 30 where Paul talks about that the mystery is husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church we yeah, all know that, yeah. we all know that part mm -hmm. but he says I'm speaking to you of a mystery and nobody understood at the time the mystery was that the Lord Jesus would be the bridegroom and he would have now a bride a company of people whose heart was so after him like Adam and Eve like Eve was created and pulled out of Adam so the bride of Christ has been pulled out when Jesus was hanging on the cross and the they put the spear in his side and it says the blood and the water issued out from him and he said it is finished the hebrew word is kalal which is the bride shall come forth the bride in greek it's testrake which means a debt canceled a debt has been paid it's the same word they used to stamp on a debtor's prison when someone had to go into prison and complete paying a debt when they came out they stamped on his paperwork testrake debt paid completely gone, forgiven. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said on the cross, but the Hebrew word kalel is the same word for bride. So the bride comes forth even as Eve came out of Adam. So the bride comes out of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Adam said to Eve, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh in Genesis. So in Ephesians 5 30, it says, I just love this. This is what I've just recently, and it's not in the American standard. It's only in the King James that I've been able to find. Jesus, uh, Paul says, this is the mystery. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, as he gave himself for her, and he sanctified her, washing her with the water of the word, that she, we are now members of his body, and then it goes on to say in the King James, we are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bones. Mm -hmm. Flesh of his flesh and bone of his bones. Now the bride those that are in love with the Lord Jesus, those that have been called apart, the ecclesia, the set apart ones, the church, we are the ones now that are in union with our bridegroom king, the Lord Praise Jesus. God. And that is was his heart from the beginning. Adam and Eve ruling together as one, as one, bringing forth the, the mandates from heavenly realm into this earthly realm. And now we as lovers of the Lord Jesus Christ, the bride of the Messiah, the bride of Yeshua, we work together with him now. And, and you know, the first um, 
issue was for Adam and Eve to multiply, subdue the earth and multiply. And so now we, with the Lord Jesus, as we pray, as we expose the enemy like he was to do, and we call forth things that be not as though they were, we call forth the things in the heavenly realm. And we're in that, that, that love relationship with the Lord Praise Jesus the Lord. as the Praise bride, the Lord. as the bride of Christ. Okay. So Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm just, you know, I'm, oh my God. Okay. Praise the Lord. So, and th so that's what a glow is trying to do is to get men and women. Yes. Working together. Working and, together. Amen. And, and so the heart of a glow is on. always for the restoration of women, because like I said earlier, the enemy has known the plan. And so he hates women. He hates that they're able to expose him because we know that the first, you know, when Eve said, well, the serpent beguiled me, the serpent deceived me, and continuing on, she would continue, she was the first one to expose him, and women continually expose, for what he, expose him for what he's doing. And so he hates women. Mm -hmm. And like we said, for centuries, the plan was to keep us pulled apart, men and women not working together. And we know that even in, even in the church, we have, we've seen that for centuries. Um, where where women were not treated as 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 equal, like they didn't have enough sense to even hear the voice of God, or, or it's not sense of reasoning, but it's it's the heart. And so, um, a glow just seeks to restore women to their place. And you know, whether it's sex trafficking now, I mean, there's so many things in the world that um, when when people understand who they are, their identity, and how loved they are, that they are the beloved of the Lord. I think so many times about David. David's name means beloved. And when we see a picture, shadow, and type in the Old Testament of those that understand their identity in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. understand how beloved that they are, then they, I mean, we could look at David and Goliath. And we, we, understanding who you are in Christ makes all the difference mm -hmm. in, in whether you think that you can uh, have the authority to pull, a devil, to pull down the, a Goliath, mm -hmm. a giant. And so I love looking at the shadows and the types in the Old Testament because I always have said that um, the Old Testament is the uh, will of God concealed and the New Testament is the will of God revealed. And so we can get the truths of the New Testament and then the pictures because when yeah, Jesus came, yeah. he came speaking of parables, mm -hmm. word pictures, mm -hmm. because he knew, he knows us, he's a creator. Mm -hmm. And so we can look at pictures. And so I even look at the bride of Christ. What does she look like? Mm -hmm. hey, what does she do? And and so some of those types, as we, we can even see through Abraham and Isaac in Genesis 22, mm -hmm. when the father told Abraham to take his son, his only son, up and, and offer him. It was at Mount Moriah, the very same place that foreshadowed where Jesus would go 4,000 years later, where he would offer his own son. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says on the mount that he would provide his own sacrifice. And then it says that, of course, there was a ram in the thicket. They didn't, Abraham did not touch it, Isaac. He provided himself a lamb on the very mount that he would 4,000 years later provide himself a lamb. And, you know, then it says that Abraham went down the mountain, but it didn't say Isaac went down. Mm -hmm. We never, we don't hear any more from Isaac. If you read that Genesis 22, read Genesis 23, you don't see Isaac. Abraham came down, we don't see it. You know, the next time we see Isaac mentioned, if he is a shadow and a foretype of the Lord Jesus Christ, we see him the next time after... Abraham tells Eleazar, his servant, Eleazar's name means comforter, which sounds like Holy Spirit, a picture, shadow, and type. Eleazar, I want you to go to my people. Don't go to the Canaanites. I want you to go my, to my people and find a bride for my son. Now, Isaac, we haven't seen. We didn't see him. He's not mentioned. He's still up on Mount Moriah, as far as we know. So Eleazar goes, and he goes into... Uh, into the land and he goes and he travels with 10 camels and he finds a wife and he says he went to the well he went to a well and we know that in isaiah it talks about the wells of salvation and when jesus encountered the woman at the well it was always a picture of salvation so there she is there's rebecca and she waters and he eliezer says when i i'll know it's the right woman because she's going to water my camels now interestingly enough i was in beersheba israel and they showed us this big well we went to this huge well and they said this was probably if not the same well, then one exactly like it. And they said, they showed us these, now it's not buckets in this well like we think in America, a little bucket. It was this huge wooden thing. And they said one camel would take 10 of those big buckets to just water one camel. He had 10 camels. Rebecca was a strong woman. She had to have given him 100, had pulled up 100 buckets 
to water these camels. So we're talking about sincerity. We're talking about perseverance. We're talking about faithfulness. This woman had in her qualities, in her integrity, and in her character, she was an, a woman of virtue. And so um, we get a picture of the bride through this. And, he, and Eliezer says, will you come? And, and of course, we know she <coughs> does come. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we next see he, Eliezer travels with her with the 10 camels. He comes back, and then it says, we finally see Isaac again. She says to Eliezer, as they approach the land where Isaac and Abraham are, who is that man in the distance? He says, oh, that's my master. That's when we see Jesus, Isaac again. In other words, Jesus goes to the cross. He, he was raised in, the, he raised in three days, but he, next time we see him coming is when he comes for his bride, like a, Rebecca saw Isaac. And so we get the pictures and the shadows and the types of, of the bride there. In fact, an interesting word, we all know of the Proverbs 31 woman and uh, the virtuous woman. And that word virtue is an interesting word in Hebrew. It's C-H-A-Y-I-L, Shalil. And it actually means she is a force it means a mighty power used to describe an army. So this woman is a warring woman, just like we were talking about with that uh, Hebrew word helpmeet. She face to face, revealing, exposing, and it's part of an army. So first in the natural, then in the spiritual. The woman is the birther. She is also, you know, she, she births in the spirit realm and wars in the spirit realm too. So virtuous actually has the connotation of being strong, war a warrior really so yes oh. it's interesting how those words you know change yes mm -hmm. I, you know i'm i'm allowing you to talk because um i mean i know there's so much information that you have but i really sit here as a student and not mm -hmm. as someone interviewing you it's just you have so much information mm -hmm. and um and i'm just i really i'm just I really need to be writing instead of talking. Mm -hmm. But a glow started off being just women, okay, it did. initially. It did. And then later on, men were able to, um, you know, join and mm -hmm. become a part. Mm -hmm. So have you, re have, has there been any, any resistance because of this, you know, the, the, the mandate, the mm -hmm. teaching, the mission of a glow uh, about the woman? Because even, even in the Christian world, and in the secular world, you know, this idea about a woman uh, being as empowered as you sit here and say mm -hmm. is not acceptable. Right. And so I'm just, how has it been accepted throughout a globe with, mm -hmm. with men being a part of it now? Um, as far as I know, there hasn't been any problem with that because it's the truth. Do they receive it? The women? The, or, and, the and the men, the men. yeah. Well, it's slow to come on now because, um, you know, men have a lot of their own things already. But as the uh, as the word is revealed and people understand the truth of the word, we actually have men's aglows now. And there's especially a huge one in uh, the Netherlands. So, I mean, and, and men are a part of them. I mean, that is the heart of the father. So, you know, whether it's through a glow or whether women and men work together in church situations and marriages, just whatever, it's just wh wherever that is. That was the heart of the home. That was the first, um, the heart of God to have that. So it is, you know, women have welcomed it because we know now that that is the heart. Of God. And um, yeah, we've had men's aglows and we've always had male, male advisors. Okay. So how do you, um, how do you restore, uh, let's see, what is it? How do you restore and mobilize men and women in a glow. How, how, what, what are some of the things that you well, do? Well, a lot of it is through Bible study, almost the, like what you and I are doing right now, because uh, a people perishes for a lack of knowledge. And so if we don't understand what we've been called to do, and, mm. and women have been so beat up, and, and honestly, mm. you know, for the years thinking that they're worthless, that they're not worth anything. And just for someone to begin to hear that they are the beloved of the Lord, that the Lord Jesus died for them, that they are that they are very important and very valuable to the kingdom of God because their essence, their very purpose was created in the image of their father. Mm -hmm. And they are just as important. So um, that is mobilizing. It starts with just understanding who we are in Christ. I think much of the body of Christ doesn't understand 
their value to the Lord Jesus and who they really are, their identity in Him, mm -hmm. and that is freeing. When you understand who you are, you don't you don't succumb. I mean, we all succumb sometimes to people's opinions. We all do, mm -hmm. but we understand more of who we are in Christ, mm -hmm. and so we don't become so, uh, you know, we can't just fall fall apart when things all happen because we know that there is an enemy in the world that, that would love to for us to feel unworthy about who we are. So it's so important when you're studying the Word. Uh, the Bible, it, the King James, it's so important to really study the, the Greek and Hebrew yes. along with that. So because, you know, when we read the word and the scriptures that the passages in the word of God that you've mentioned, I'm just mm -hmm. that it was a revelation to me. Mm -hmm. But then you broke it down by what the uh, Greek and Hebrew mm -hmm. words really meant. So you would have that understanding. So I guess you know, when you're studying the Word of God, it's best, the only way to get that really full, but other than through the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. is to really study the Greek and Hebrew right. as you study, as yes. you read the Word of God. Well, the Old Testament, of course, was written in Hebrew and the New Testament in Greek. So you would look at the Hebrew, and there's many, you can even get on a computer and do an e-sword. It's called e-sword and download e-sword, and it tells you, concordance, gives you each word and what it means in the Hebrew. Okay. We're going to go to break, and uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, and I'm, my mouth is just really closed right now. <laughs> Praise God. But we'll be right back. God bless you. Welcome back. This is Matters Today, and I'm Joyce Young. I'm your host. What matters to you really does matter to us. And my guest today is Sonia Clark here. Just, oh, you may want her to come to your church. Uh, if you would like to get in contact with her, please call the station, and we will um, give you information how to get in contact with her. You can reach her, though, at www.louisianaglow.com. But you may want her to come to your organization, your church, and share because I'm a learner, okay? I'm really a learner. And she just, if you've been watching the program, she, is sharing, she has been sharing about a glow and the mission of a glow and God's, God's um, purpose for mankind, man and woman, and I'm telling you, it's just it's life changing. The information that uh, uh, Sonia has been sharing, praise God. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to also, we, she has so much more information. But now you're going to share about the bride. Well, that's one of my favorite the bride things. of Christ. <laughs> one of my favorite things is uh, probably about uh, five to eight years ago, the Lord just. You know, I've always had this love for the Old Testament. Like I said, the Old Testament is pictures, shadows, Me and too. types. Yeah. And that has not changed. We're not under the Old Law Covenant. We're under the New Covenant of Grace. But the pictures and the shadows, types, and principles have not changed. Mm -hmm. And so I have this love for the Hebraic roots of our faith. And um, we can, a, a few years ago, I just got a revelation of the Bride of Christ in the Song of Solomon. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said the one greater than Solomon is here. He was talking about himself. And in the Song of Solomon, it is a picture of the bride and the bridegroom, of Jesus Christ. And I know that there are people that can look at a different level. They can look at it on the literal level. But it's like an onion. It can be peeled back in different layers. And one of the layers is that it is a picture of the Lord Jesus wooing his bride, you and I, the lovers of the Lord Jesus, and how he takes that bride um, on different journeys. And he reveals himself, first of all, in chapter 1 as the shepherd and how he... When you first uh, become you, you saved and you just love him, he reveals himself a shepherd to you. He leads you. He guides you. And Anyway, we won't go into that, but the whole study, I began to understand who the bride was. Mm. What is the journey of the bride? And what does she look like? And what does he do? How does, how does he... He um, deal with us, and, 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 and some of the things we go through, whether we go through wilderness periods in our journey with the Lord, it's all right there in the Song of Solomon mm, where she walks mm. through the wilderness. So we know that we know oh, we haven't done anything so horrible. It's part of the journey. Jesus went through the wilderness too. He was the beloved of the Lord. And so as you read, it becomes, I always say it's kind of like this. You know, when we were little kids, I don't know if you used to use a cereal box. We used to have the cereal box, and in the pack, back of the cereal box, it was like a picture that was decoded, and you had to use a special red glasses, hook them on your ears, <laughs> and be able to see the picture, and the picture would pop out. That's what I say it is with the Holy Ghost glasses. It's like when you have the Holy Spirit, and you begin reading these pictures, shadows, and types, like the bride in the Song of Psalms, 
they just come out and the Holy Spirit shows you. So one time I was going to a particular horrible, horrible trial. You've ever been through a horrible, oh, horrible, yes. terrible, yes. terrible, terrible yes. one. Yes. You don't think you're going to make it, Yes, trial. yes. And uh, the Lord woke me up several nights in a row, and I just woke up, up be praying. And on the last night he woke me up, I heard a specific word, and I didn't know what it meant. And what he said was six months of myrrh, six months of spices. I had no idea what that meant, but I knew I better go find out. And so I found it in the book of Esther. And in Esther, we find where Esther was pulled apart. She was sent, if you know the story of Esther, she was sent to live in the king's palace. The king wanted a bride, and there was a bunch of women in there. And they went through the, the time of beautifying of the bride, and they had to go through six months of myrrh and six months of spices. It talks about a purification of the bride. And as you and I, as the bride of Christ, we go through periods of beautification where he works in us those spices. And I began to look at what myrrh meant. And myrrh comes from a tree that is very, 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 very bitter. It actually means death to self. Mm. And so sometimes on our journey with the Lord, mm. we go through seasons of myrrh, which is where we have to just deny ourselves. Well, we don't mm. give in to what we mm. feel like saying, doing, and acting. Maybe it's in a marriage where it's very difficult. Maybe it's in a situation mm. with children and we deny ourselves what our flesh wants to do. So we cover, we become soaked in myrrh. And certainly we could do what we want. But if we want to follow the Lord Jesus, we deny ourselves. And I call that our seasons of myrrh. And then it says six months of myrrh, six months of spices. And I began to look at what the spices were. I found them all in the Song of Solomon, again, where the bride is pictured, and also is in the anointing oil of the priests in Exodus 30. The spices were calamus, cinnamon, and cassia. And those are the spices. And all of them talk about different characteristics of the bride. What does she look like? She has death to self with myrrh. Cassia, she walks, they mean upright, like she walks in uprightness. She doesn't give in to her flesh. She doesn't walk according to the ways of the world. And also cinnamon. Cinnamon talks about that she is, um, let's see, cinnamon was that she is holy, has holiness of heart. And when you look up these root words, we know that those are some of the things that Jesus works in our lives. The Holy Spirit works in our lives. Mm -hmm. And the other one was cal um, Cassia, which means to bow down. She's humble. So six months of myrrh, the Lord was telling me, this trial was for six months of myrrh, six months of spices. I'm going to work in you a beautification of the bride, of a beauty of what the character, the character, the inward man, the inward character of Christ, that she would be, that she would look like me, because that is the whole goal of Christianity. We want to be transformed into our lover mm -hmm. of our soul, the Lord Jesus. That is the whole goal, that we would look like him, that we would be like him. Isn't that what they say about a marriage? Man and a woman look like each other, act like each other. They can finish each other's sentences after so many years. We want to look like Jesus. Mm. So I saw in the book of Esther, the bride. And so even a Glow has said many times that they have that end time Esther um, mandate on a Glow that she would go in and pray for Israel. She gave up of her life and she said, if I perish, I perish. And she went before the king, fasted and prayed and went before the king and asked for mercy for her people, for the Jewish people. A Glow has been um, given that mandate as well to, to pray and to intercede for the Jewish people. So Praise God. Praise God. Just see all those shadows and types in there. Okay. Praise God. I is um, uh, I want to ask you about uh, is Six months of myrrh and six months of spices. I'm going to do a study, too. Okay. I, I just, I, oh, my. Okay. I encourage you to do a study. Just get into the book of Solomon and the book of Esther and just do a study and see what the Lord is saying to you about what you need to do. What about, uh, we talked about the division of the Church of Saul versus the Tabernacle of David. Yes, I just, you know, that's just been something of my heart lately. The Lord has been speaking to me, and um, that's just, you know, God just it seems like to me he's bringing a division of the church. Those that are true followers of him, those whose heart is to be after him like David. David had a heart to follow the Lord. And I was reading the other day in 1 Samuel about Saul, and Saul had a divided heart. Mm -hmm. He gave in to the people's yeah. opinions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Samuel, which is a picture of the Holy Spirit, said, Why didn't you not kill Agag and all the Amalekites like you were told? Mm -hmm. Well, because the people didn't want it done. So mm -hmm. there, there's a group that we need to we need to all guard our hearts and know that we are following the presence and following the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. and uh, he he and he alone and so I just see a division happening in the body mm -hmm. like like I've never seen before okay okay praise God true worshipers 
Okay, we're going to go to break again. I re- just hate to go to break, but we'll be right back. S- stay right there. Don't go any place. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight. Uh, I, this is Matters Today, and I'm Joyce Young, and I've been talking to Sonia Clark, a woman with a vision. She's a woman with a vision, full of information about the Word of God and what the Lord is saying today and representing the Glow International. And so, Sonia, thank you so much again for being on the program. Yeah. And I just want you to have the last words mm-hmm. and close us out in prayer. And as you know, I will be having you back oh, again. I love you so much thank for coming. You. Thank Thanks, you. God. I've just enjoyed it so much. I have been sharing with Joyce about you know, just my heart to see the, the, the heart of the Father established in the earth through the male and female again and um, and rest, restoring people, all people, back to the back to the back to the Lord. And um, my heart is for the Hebraic roots of our faith to understand what you know. We are been grafted into the olive tree, and we are part. We are not the root. The Jews are the root. We have. We need to know our inheritance. We need to know our heritage. And so yeah. I was sharing with you about how some of the things have crept into the church now that we really don't even know how they got there. And I was just talking about, you know, Constantine, when he became emperor of Rome in 312, he brought in with him um, a lot of things. He he tried to improve on the church and he brought the Roman Empire together. He decided he was going to be like the priest king himself. And so what happened was he was a worshiper of this Babylonian god called Mithras and it was a sun god and apparently he was about to get into a big battle and he went out and he was praying to the sun god and he saw a cross in the sky he said and so he decided that he was a Christian now. So what happened was he began to bring in things like Mithras's birthday was December 25th so he decided well I'm going to bring the Christians and the pagans together let's all say that Christ's birthday was on December 25th. And you can look this up in your Encyclopedia Britannica, your whatever, Wikipedia. Also for Easter, he said, uh, well, we're not going to do the Jews anymore. We're not going to do Passover. He was anti-Semitic. He means he did not like the Jews. And so for their Passover time, well, they have an Ishtar, and she was a goddess of fertility, and they worshipped her around the lunar um, the first time that there was a full moon in the vernal equinox, and so that happened to be Ishtar Easter. It came for Easter, and they had eggs for the fertility goddess. And so the church has incorporated some of this. So we've lost our Passover. I mean, we still do, still do some Pentecost, but Rosh Hashanah and the Feast of Trump, the Feast of Trumpets, and um, the Feast of Tabernacles. I mean, that is the roots of our faith. And so I was just sharing with you how praise God. a lot of that's been brought praise in that God. wasn't there. So. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We really need to do a study on that so yeah. that we can be enlightened, like you just yeah. said. You know, so know. many things have come right. Yeah. Right. And I guess that's why it, 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 for my church today, it's not Easter, it's Resurrection Amen. Day. And that's great. so that's what we say. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. So what else you want to share? You know, um, because we want you to pray in closing yeah, out the program. Yeah. Um, that was just basically it. I just wanted to um, just to thank you for having me and just to be able to share, um, you know, how we really need to know the word of God because it's it's his word that sets us free. It's his word that yeah. washes us. And so many I've been thinking lately about Jesus, the word made flesh. And when he was washing the disciples feet, he was the word washing. Mm-hmm. The word washed the disciples. The word himself came and washed the disciples and how we talked about Ephesians 530 and how Jesus came, and he he is our bridegroom king, and as the mystery is what is how the church of God loved the church, Jesus loved the church, and he sanctified her and washed her through the word. So we need to get into our word. Okay, why don't you pray? Okay. Father, I just thank you for this time, Lord. I just thank you, Father, that each person that has heard your word go forth, O God, that he has planted seed in hearts, Father, to grow. Father, I ask that your word, that it's your word spoken that goes forth, that no man would be lifted up at all, but it be your word engrafted and planted in our hearts, Father. Lord, we want to look like you. We want to be like you, Lord Jesus. That is our heart's desire, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. I just thank you for each person watching, Lord. And if they don't know who you are, Father, I thank you, Lord, that they will hunger and thirst to know this one that loves us so much that he gave his very life for us because we are the beloved, like David, of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Praise the Lord.
And again, if you want to get in contact with uh, Sonia Clark, please call us here at the station and we'll get that information to you. Bye-bye. Yeah.